back everybody, Edwin the Magic Engineer, and I wanted to do an update for a little bit of the collection video that I made earlier. I've had a lot of questions, so I wanted to just answer some of those questions. And I also wanted to talk a little bit about my Magic the Gathering travel bag. Uh, what I actually take with me to big tournaments and uh, all the essentials that I feel like I need to have with me when I'm actually there. So first let's get into um, the actual collection update. So if you guys saw my other video, I'm going to link it up top so you can actually uh, go to it if you hadn't actually seen it yet. But based on that video, which is actually one of my most popular ones, um, a lot of people have asked a lot of questions about, you know, my collection and like, why did I do this and not this? So let me try to answer those. Um, my collection is entirely organized around playing magic, not so much around like being a collector. Because I do feel like I have, you know, the heart of a collector for a lot of things, but for the most part, I love playing the game. And so the, the way I put my collection together, the way I organize it, the way I do all of this is all for the purpose of being able to build decks quickly and tear down decks quickly. That's the purpose of my organization. So I'm not saying this is the only way to do it. I'm saying, but that is the main goal. Now, also, I don't actually do uh, just one format. I play lots of formats. So for instance, like some of you have asked, like, you know, why don't you organize by set? One major reason why I don't is if I organize by set, then <clears throat> I would have like all the section of cards for like standard would be in like one section. And every time there's a rotation, I have to keep on constantly moving cards over. But um, there's an, a bigger reason than that. The bigger reason I don't organize by set is based on uh, reprints. Um, as you guys know, a lot of times the Wizards of the Coast will print something in an earlier set and then they'll reprint it later, right? Well, I don't have a huge need or desire to have like, you know, 40 copies of Dark Ritual, right? Or 20 copies of Counterspell or 10 copies of Birds of Paradise from like all these different sets. So like just, I don't feel like I need it. When I get extras of a lot of card, most of the time what I'll do is I'll trade away those extras to go get cards I don't have because my goal is to be able to build up any deck I want to in any of the formats I want to play. So if I am missing cards in Legacy, for instance, I'm not going to hold on to my 10th copy of a card that's big and modern. It doesn't make any sense to me. So I trade away those extras except for four so I can put the value into cards that I actually want. Well, that means if there's an expensive card, for instance, like uh, say, you know, Birds of Paradise or something, then if I only want four, I'm going to want usually my oldest copies of it. And so going back to that standard question, even if they reprinted it in the latest standard set, if I had all my standard cards in one section and there was a lot of reprints, I would have to like, you know, not use the newer ones, trade or sell those. Then I'd have to go get all these old cards and then put them into that set. And so there'd be this constant rotation. Every time Wizards of the Coast makes a new set and adds a lot of reprints, there'd be like a big rotation. And that, that happens, as you guys know, pretty quick. And I don't want to constantly have to manage my set. So based on um, organizing around like any set, that, that's one reason. Um, another big reason, though, is that <clears throat> the purpose of this collection, like I said, is to build and tear down decks quickly, right? If I had organized this collection based on, some people asked about casting costs or organizing it based on onset again, um, it would be very difficult to know where those are going to be. Like say the Birds of Paradise, for instance, if I had like here was like, you know, my Alpha Birds, Beta Birds, Revised, Unlimited, uh, you know, fifth, fourth edition, fifth edition, Ravnica, eighth edition. If there was like all these editions of where the Birds of Paradise were listed, but I only have four, then I'm going to have to go find where they actually are in like those actual sets. Um, so it's really difficult to pull them out. But if I say, okay, no, 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 I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go by color and then letter inside. And that's kind of what you see here. Like if I uh, go by, here's my artifacts. There's my black, there's my blue. And I'll turn these off now. Yeah, I installed those lights. I thought that was pretty slick. And then I've got the end of blue, then green, going to here, then the red going to there. 
and you may, I don't know, maybe you can't see this on the camera, but red finishes there, then white, and then gold, and then uh, lance there, and then all of my basic lands there at the very end. So that's how I have them all organized. So I would have to like constantly shuffle those around, but all of this is organized so I can like put them in and then take them out really quick. And if they're by color and then by letter, then if I need to know where birds of paradise are, it's going to be green B. And then I only have to look in a stack about that big. Someone asked about uh, organizing by, based on casting cost, but you know, you got to realize I have about 33,000 cards in my collection. I think that's like 9,000 cards about in each of the colors. So you split that up alphabetically and you've got like a hundred, you know, 50 something cards in like each letter on average. Well, if I need like a green B, that's only like 150 some cards I need to look through. If you organize based on casting cost, there might be like 900 cards that are all like one drop green or two drop green. So you're looking through a stack like this instead of a stack that's only like that, you know, to find out one card that you actually need. So it really makes sense to go by, to go by color and then go by letter because then when you want to find something within like a couple minutes, I can build a deck and then electronically and then put it together here. And that's another point I wanted to mention. Some guys had asked about, like, uh, I think when they were asking about converted casting costs, why don't I organize based on that? I think what their intention was is like, if I needed another two drop green spell, you go to your drawers, you pull out all your two drop greens and you thumb through them. But the point I made is use the electronic tool for that. Because in the electronic tool, I can basically say, okay, this is old school. So it's going to be alpha, beta, unlimited, revised, just you know, list all the sets. Then I can say creature, and I can say two casting cost filter. And then like there's all electronically all the creatures. And then that will even be filtered inside of my collection. So everything listed is something that I actually own. Or I could look at the ones that I don't own and see if there's something I want to buy. Point is. Like just like that, I can find which cards I want to have in the collection. And then once I've now electronically made my deck list, I come over here and I just choop, 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 pull those cards out and bam, the deck is actually built. So that's the reason why I, I do it like that. So um, again, this isn't or an organization that I think is for everyone. But if your goal is like mine, you want to build decks to play. That's your primary goal and you want to do it across multiple different formats, then yeah, this might be one of the best ways to actually do it. And again, it has a large setup, but the payoff is really there. Now, um, the tool that I use is MTG Studio, and I recommended that in my last video, and I've been using that for years. And something that uh, came up is like, they really lagged on getting the updates for the latest set for, for Ixalan. I waited like months for the set, that update to come out, then finally, like, I just got irritated and I went on Reddit and I said, hey, is MTG Studio dead? And then, like, the next day, the guy released, like, an update for Ixalan. But now I've been waiting for an update for Commander, oh, sorry, um, Iconic Masters. And so I'll have to go see if they actually put that out finally. But MTG Studio was my go-to solution for quite a few years. And now it's starting to just, like, fall behind. So I'm kind of keeping my ears and eyes open for something else I can use for collection organization and kind of deck building. I don't really need a tool to play with, but that's what I'm looking at. My first tool was Magic Workstation years ago. Anyways, the final topic. So for my bag that I actually take to tournaments and what I actually put in it, um, I got this free from work, uh, which is really cool. Cause yeah, right now I used to work for Intel, but now I work for Hewlett Packard. And so um, the reason why I put this bag together and I just wanted to show this is like, if I go to a big tournament like GP Vegas and you're walking around with everything you think you need at that tournament, what is that gonna be? And this kind of has everything in it. So at some tournaments, I'll bring less stuff than what's actually in here to kind of lighten it up. But I just kind of wanted to put it all here so you can, and I thought it's an interesting topic. Maybe some of you guys might wonder the same thing or might've like pondered on this topic. So anyways, a water bottle because you're gonna get thirsty and you don't have time to go over and get a drink all the time and uh, several little electronic devices. Um, one of them is a battery charger to get your phone all powered back up because you know you're going to be out, you're going to be texting, taking pictures and video, and a cable for your phone, of course, and a set of headphones because sure enough, you're going to find yourself in a situation where you need to listen, but you don't want everyone else to get bothered by it. And then also in this bag, um, a USB adapter because you're going to need 
if I actually have AC power, you don't want to run your battery down. And uh, this is actually, this is a cool thing. This is my jeweler's loop. So I actually use this when I want to inspect a card. If I'm at a tournament or something and someone gives me a card I can buy and I really want to make sure it's real, I want my jeweler's loop so I can pull it out and look at that thing real close and verify that it's actually legit. Then of course, fresh breath matters. Don't, don't be terrible to the rest of your friends. And uh, a checkbook is probably better than just bringing cash because if uh, anything happens here, you can protect it a little bit more than just if someone steals your cash and cash is gone. Um, and the front pouch here, um, you're always going to need at least one pin, at least one pencil, and then sometimes a Sharpie for basic things and an eraser. So I keep those because I'll have like a notepad, but notice specifically, I always have these in the same bag because like when you're in the middle of a tournament and you got to get to it really quick, you got to know where it is. So it's just always in the same spot. USB thumb drive with some of the general files that I feel like I would want to carry with me just overall on average. Now on this top pouch here, this is kind of fun. I have some of my favorite dice and I've shown these on some pictures and stuff on my Instagram account. These are all my gold dice. I don't know if you can see all these, but there's several of them and they're all metal. I love those dice. Those are a lot of fun. And uh, then in the main bag here, oops. Oh, I knocked over that. That's fine. So I keep a couple of play mats because like one for me. And then if I am playing with a friend and we don't want to get our cards dirty and they didn't happen to bring a play mat with them, got a couple of play mats in there. And then I've got my main deck box, and I'll show what's in there in just a second. And then uh, smaller deck boxes I keep stacked up on the side. Because, it's, you know, you want to bring decks for all the different formats you might play in, and they all don't fit in that main box. And on the very back pouch, you know, if you had a trade binder or some fun magazine or a book or something with you, you can have that there. Don't always bring that, though. So now, this last thing is inside of this box... Oh, I love this box. My wife got this for me for our anniversary. It's got a nice little magnetic section here. So I've got, um, at the moment, I've got my main old school deck is here. Um, a deck I've been playtesting with is here. And my EDH deck is here. Then I've got a bag with like more dice and counters and stuff here. And then this last thing is a, uh, a box of additional sleeves. Because... If you're actually going to be at a tournament, you might actually either need to resleeve your deck or you might buy some new cards and you want to protect them right off the bat. So having an extra set of sleeves is really important. Oh, one more thing, actually. I forgot to show. Where is it in here? Okay. When you go to a tournament, um, <clears throat> when you're playing for fun, you'll use things like dice and things like that. When you're real serious and it's an in a serious tournament, you need to actually have notepads for um, writing down all the facts about the game. So these ones are actual Star City Games pads, and this one's from Channel of Fireball, so you could just use to do life totals, but you can also write little notes on here. And in a tournament setting, this is much better, especially like if a judge, if you have to call a judge over or something, you gotta prove what happened, you wanna actually have a record. But then also just having paper, because sure enough, you're gonna meet people, and you're gonna wanna write down phone numbers and email addresses and things like that. So that's pretty much it. That's what I bring with me when I travel for tournaments and stuff. So those are the updates I had for collection and MTG Studio and what I have in my travel bag. I hope that was interesting. I hope that you guys learned something or maybe give me some comments below. I'd love to hear what, what you actually carry in your bag. And uh, yeah, thanks for attending the channel, guys. Bye.